Hello everybody, I hope you guys are all doing super duper well. And I know it's been a bit since we've had a discussion about what's going on here at the house. That's for mostly two reasons. One, I kind of hurt myself working on the project I'm going to share with you guys this week. Kind of strained some muscles in the back and was not feeling great. And I also had a birthday. However, I did get quite a bit done. Uh, definitely a hard fought victory behind me here, but let's get into exactly what happened. So if we start at the top of the stairs here from the kitchen, heading down to the basement, you see this whole wall has changed and the obvious divide between plaster on brick and the stone foundation wall. Also, yeah, we got light down here, actual light, which is very, very nice. So happy to not be working off work lights anymore because that was a real pain in the butt. But as you can see, we have a completed wall now that looks really good. All the stones came clean and for the most part, we don't have any debris left on them. A few of them have a little bits of white paint still on them, but honestly, not that worried about it. And all the way up the stairs as well, it's looking really good. We got the end cut here for the stairs, so this area is looking pretty good as well. And I have the tiniest bit right here that I still need to poke in there. Honestly, when my back started hurting, it was really hard to work this low off the floor, so that's why that's not done yet. And that is the very last little remnant of cement right there, that little bit, uh, which will need to be coming off here soon. But I think honestly, me working on the stairs like I was, I, I don't know, maybe twisted or pulled or something, when I was digging all of the old mortar and the cement off this wall and chiseling away at the old cement, I, I don't know, made some funny movement and did something funny to my back, which was real, real fun. <laughs> but that's now starting to feel better and honestly couldn't be happier with the way this all turned out. 
from how terrible, absolutely terrible this looked to how great it looks now. So quite excited about that. Of course, I have been working on the wall that was behind the lathe as well. But before we get into that, there's a bit of uh, sad neighborhood news uh, that's happened over the past, uh, well, two weeks. Uh, about two weeks ago, uh, one of the major churches here in my area, there were two really big ones. Both in the last eight or so months have caught fire and have been severely damaged. Uh, one being St. Laborious, and then the more recent one, the one that I can see out my back window, and I see every morning when I wake up, it's like the first thing I see out the window, is the steeple of St. Augustine. And unlike Laborious, which they have plans for and isn't going to be a complete and total loss, so there will be parts, at least remnants of that church, that will be preserved and maintained for the future. St. Augustine is not getting the same fate. So they have been slowly over these last few weeks tearing St. Augustine down. And I have been scrambling. Uh, I've been up there probably four or five times now, A, to get footage, uh, but also to uh, salvage materials and things that will be ended up in the trash. Uh, things like slate, uh, things like some of the woodwork and, and things I know will just end up in the trash can. Um, so I wanna share a few of the little things I, uh, I brought back. Uh, and hopefully as that process continues, I can at least save something for posterity for the future. Again, the idea for this house is to be semi-public, so I can at least display a part of my neighborhood's history uh, for when people do get to come see it. So I think that's a worthwhile uh, use of my time and uh, definitely of my energy. And then of course, things like Slate, which they're just throwing in the trash can, that's a big help when it comes to finishing the dormers up on the Mansard. So multifaceted thing, but let me share a few things I got with you guys. So let's start here at my little workbench, discussing some of the St. Augustine slates that I was able to save. And of course, not a lot of these survived. It was a very, very large roof that could have, you know, wrapped my roof in slate probably 50 times over. But when you're talking about 100 foot in the air, when they fall, they tend to bust. So I picked up as many of these things as I possibly could, which ended up so far being probably about 60 of them, which should be just enough to be able to do my dormers. Now let's talk scale. These are my slates. These are the ones that come off of my roof. So these are actually from the dormer itself. And when you set them on top of Augustine's slates, uh, the comparison's pretty crazy. <laughs> But these are really thick, very nice. They should easily survive another 100 years. They're in fact in much better shape than my slates on, on my roof. So I think these are going to work out beautiful. Um, and again, these were things that there were very few that were still together. And I already saw them starting to put these in dumpsters. Um, these would have not been saved, uh, which is a real shame considering how much slate costs. Um, but there was so very little of it. So that'll look really remarkable and beautiful on top of the dormer. And even though I'll have to cut these, obviously, to mimic the shape of my slates, uh, luckily there are smaller pieces I need to make for my mansard as well for the dormers. It's definitely a fun little trog to try to find these things and probably climbing over things I probably shouldn't have. Um, but I think it's worth it to be able to have this material, and especially a material that was you know, original to my neighborhood as well. I think, you know, it, it tells another story and I get to keep a piece of the neighborhood, a piece of North St. Louis in North St. Louis. You know, well, the initial goal was definitely just let's go see if I can find some slate or see if what's available, what's going on up there. Um, I did end up finding one rather large piece that I had no plans on taking home. But again, I saw it underneath a bunch of bricks and it was something that is going to end up in a trash can if I didn't bring it back. And I think this is a pretty important part of the history of the church, a pretty significant part of it that I wanted to bring home that I didn't want to end up in a landfill somewhere. And that is this uh, mostly intact uh, top piece of one of the big arched Gothic windows. The size of these windows were probably pretty similar to the entire height of my house. And this is just the very peak we're seeing here. So this all would have been stained glass. It's like these big clover leaf shapes that you get in the Gothic churches. And this one is no different. There are still remnants of some of the stained glass here. This entire panel is intact. That one is entirely missing. And that one is quite busted. And we are definitely dealing with some pretty significant rot here on the top. Uh, but this being double-sided, my idea is because most of this side is intact and the wood is in really good shape, uh, quite structurally sound, 
is to actually split this down the middle because it is, again, double-sided, and take these pieces and actually transplate them on this side, and that way I can make it a big uh, mounted wall piece, get the old paint off, scrape it, you know, paint it up, make it look pretty, uh, because this isn't the image of this church I want remembered. I want it remembered for its beauty. I mean, people were, <laughs> many generations of people were married here, were baptized here, were everything, you know? So this is a pretty big, important piece of history for my area, for this community. And so I just couldn't let this uh, be thrown away. And I'm, again, it's a big piece. Uh, maybe it's kind of hard to convey here. But again, as a piece of architecture that I can save from that church that I know would have met its fate in a dump somewhere. I just couldn't let it happen. You guys know me. I'm holding on to pocket doors I don't need back there. So, <laughs> um, uh, But this is obviously a piece I don't want to give up. I want to be able to tell the story of North St. Louis, of, of St. Louis Place, the neighborhood I live in, in St. Louis Place. I don't want it to be told somewhere else in St. Louis. Uh, my, you know, community obviously has been passed up for many, many times and much of our rich, rich history that, that was this area is now either in other homes in St. Louis or other areas of St. Louis or it's in other parts of the country. So I don't want uh, this piece to uh, leave this neighborhood. If this is the last remembrance of this church, so be it. But at least I have something. And at least I can be able to share that with, well, you all and then... Anybody who ends up wandering one day and comes through the house on a tour. At least a beautiful piece of remembrance, I suppose. And I do have a few little pieces of stained glass, nothing crazy important, but the stained glass that was in that church was incredible. And um, I think they're trying to salvage some of it now. It was made by a pretty famous local company here by the name of Emo Fry, a company that's still around today that still makes stained glass, uh, which is pretty impressive for a craft that is almost dead, uh, especially in commercial form. But the uh, loss of this church is definitely uh, kind, of be kind of a big blow to me because it really is one of those things that, uh, well, destroys my morning routine, if you will. I see it every single day when I wake up and it's just when the actual tower comes down, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just don't like the fact that we're losing so much history, you know, in these, these buildings, I, I feel like my neighborhood is, is really turning a corner. Things are happening. Things are changing. And it's sad to lose these buildings right now because I feel like the change is, it's right around the corner. It's coming. If, 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 you know, if these buildings, these houses, these structures could last another year, two years, somebody will do something with them. Somebody will, will restore them. Somebody will bring them back. And at least the fabric, the, the architectural fabric of my neighborhood can be preserved. But it feels like sometimes it's a losing battle. I also, like, I had filmed a lot up at that church with a lady who was trying to save it desperately last year. Uh, and at St. Laborious with Dave, who had done some amazing things over there. Uh, so I have a video that I was supposed to release a long time ago that I've been sitting on for a while. I've got tons of footage uh, that I do plan on going over because I feel like talking about these two monumental structures um, that were a huge part of my neighborhood and a huge part of my city and a huge part of the history of many, many, many families who used to live on this part of town. Um, so at some point I plan on telling that story, hopefully some point here very soon. So be on the lookout for that soon, but enough about the churches for now. Let's get into more of the, the stone walls that I have here in my basement, which are terribly insignificant in perspective. So if that wall's done, let's go ahead and handle this one right here. This, of course, is the opposite side of where we just were. And we had a window here that I showed you all last time that had a lot of brick in it. I believe this was the coal chute. So I believe it was angled before. And so eventually somebody just filled that upper area with brick. And of course, our favorite material here at the house, cement, uh, which was really fun to get off, but we got it all out of there. Uh, there's also another... A uh, fun little bit that I'll have to do there. You can see the very, very noticeable red brick in that. It's obviously not supposed to be in the foundation. So that will have to be removed. And that way we'll get a new water spout out there and be able to add our little dove or quail spigot. Sorry, not dove, quail. Which, of course, when it comes back to getting to the front of the house, having a water spigot outside versus on the interior of the house and running it out a window will be much more handy when it comes to all the exterior projects we have to do this year. 
But I've ripped out all the brick. We're back down to no cement, which makes me very, very happy. And things are looking a little rough down here, but not too bad. We do have a little bit of rot on the sill. Luckily, it's not super wet. Uh, it was just a little soft here on the edge, but structurally, it's okay. Uh, the sill that was here was just concrete, so it's gone. And there is some damage to the actual uh, stone sill here, but it isn't damaged on the front, only the back side. So I think I'm fine to keep that all in place. Everything looks pretty sound here. So now I have to add a bunch of new stone here. Luckily, I have been saving stone for just, just such an occasion. So a whole bunch of buckets of little stones. These come from various places from around the neighborhood, from inside the yard. Hall's house was next door to mine at one point and these stones come out of the ground with heavy rain. And I tend to grab them and throw them in buckets or just kind of throw them around outside and hold on to them because eventually I need them. So <laughs> it's a perfect example of why I don't tend to throw away stone and building materials because I always end up needing them. So let's grab the time lapse, get to throwing some of this stuff back up in here and rebuild this entire sill area. Firstly, it is so much nicer to have bright lights everywhere in this place. It makes it so much easier to work down here. And here's where we are now. With a giant mess that I've made down here with stones and rocks and bits of concrete and brick just kind of everywhere. That's the remainder of the old sill and all the bricks and just random stuff that's in here. which obviously had to be removed because it is not a good material to use for a house of this era, this age. They weren't using pure Portland cement and uh, really soft bricks. The bricks are actually probably really old. I have no idea where they're from, but these are really soft bricks. So it was a really terrible combination. Uh, the limestone's actually much tougher than these bricks. <laughs> So the sill rebuild, you can see all the new stones. I actually thought I had quite a bit of limestone enough to fix this problem outright. Uh, it turns out that even though I had quite a bit of stone, I ran out rather quickly. 
Um, so I still have some around, but not enough to complete this. This might be another thing that I have to go and uh, take from St. Augustine before they literally bury the foundation in the ground for somebody else to deal with at a later date. So hopefully next weekend that'll be a problem that is fairly easily solved. Now this area right here, which is just to the right of the sill, was some kind of modification. Uh, obviously when they probably, that was done probably sometime when they added this water line that goes out to its spigot outside. But they ended up ripping out way more than I thought I, they did. The brick goes all the way up to the top here. We're underneath the fireplace in the main parlor right here for reference. But this is deep. It goes all the way out. It goes all the way out to the faced stone out front here because we're so far front in the house that it becomes less of these randomized rocks and more cut carved limestone that's, you know, gives a beautiful look outside. So that's actually the back of those faced stones out there um, with the water line running through it, um, which, you know, it wiggles enough. This should actually be a pretty easy modification to get a new pipe running out there that I will then run up as opposed to down because that's not an attractive solution. <laughs> but I'll run it up and into the system that's already here in the house and functional. But because that is so deep, the amount of stone I'm going to need is going to be crazy. Essentially, when I pulled one brick out of here, the amount of just sand that flowed out of this wall, and still does, I mean, you can see it there. All this just sand, it's pretty terrible. And obviously that is supporting absolutely nothing. And with a chimney, <laughs> because of the fireplace being right above this spot, I wanna make sure that I handle you know, getting all of this right here, this column pointed and this side pointed before I go ahead and remove too much more of this because that to me is kind of hazardy slightly. You know, obviously the nice thing with brick is when you take one out, you know, the force is divided and sent off to the sides. So it's a really good, strong system. That's why here in the city of St. Louis, you can sometimes see houses missing bricks or missing entire walls sometimes and are still standing because it is a really strong, strong system and is able to deal with quite a few faults like this one. So it's not a huge, huge concern, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Fix this and fix this first, then rip all this out, uh, gather enough stone, preferably larger stones, uh, you know, at least this size here or up, and fill this with some really strong, sturdy, solid limestone. And of course, add a new line here because having a water hose out there when I do start getting back to the front of the house, when the weather will cooperate with me and not try to drop a tornado <laughs> or be so windy that the lift will just blow over, the water hose will be super handy because right now I have to run it out of a window, so that will be super nice. And from what that looks like right there, let me show you what it looks like when all that crap is off of it. And that would be this area right here, which I literally just got done. Did this, took a shower, opened up the camera, and here we are. So you can see if you look at the two side by side, one is definitely a clear winner. So originally it seems like they did this whole single brick under each joist. Obviously the joists go into pockets in the brickwork, so this isn't the only thing holding the joists, like not by a long shot. But at some point when they plastered the ceilings here, which is probably original, they filled this entire big gap here with horsehair plaster like they would be plastering a wall or the ceiling itself. So to make up this distance, it was these giant chunks of just plaster. No bricks in there, no nothing, just plaster. Um, so what I'm gonna do is what's done on the other wall and just lay actual stones up there because to me, to the eye, that looks much, much nicer and should be fairly easy to achieve. You know, essentially I'll just be adding what is a face or a faux stone that won't be doing any any structural holding right here in front of that brick, but we'll make it look nicer all the way down. And these ones here obviously will just be gapping, so it's definitely more of a vanity thing than it is structural. Right now that wall right there is pretty structurally sound. Uh, even at the bottom, it's not too bad looking. But yeah, a little bit at a time going for something that looks like that. So it looks much better like this. 
I have to say these walls have put up quite the fight because to get anything looking halfway decent like this wall or the other wall, um, because of the treatments and the crap they've put on these, you have to, have to first take all the crap that's on the face of the stone off, which I do with a welding wire brush. The stiffer, the better. Uh, you know, because some of this stuff is really, really stubborn and you have to use a lot of water and I have to usually wash these things three or four times to get them looking halfway decent. Uh, you can see all the black on the stones down here. These are stones that have scrubbed once or twice. Uh, you have to get pretty vigorous and it takes a lot out of you. But it does come off and it looks a lot better when it comes off. After that, you of course have to break out any of the old crappy mortar that's failing. And the thing is when you're digging out mortar like this, you have to keep digging until you hit good material behind it. Now luckily, most of the original uh, lime mortar that's in all of these is in pretty good shape. It's been all right, but there are areas and voids you find that are just full of sand behind that. And you've got to dig that out so you can make a proper repair. And while well, that takes time, um, more time than it actually did when I was working outside working on the foundation. Uh, the interior, because of all this waterproofing layers and all this other stupid crap they've put on here, like the cement they've used, has not been very kind to the inside. And that's something they didn't do as much of outside. Still a little bit here and there, but not, not nearly to the degree they went crazy down here in the, in the, in the basement on the interior. And lastly, I have to point, which is probably the easiest step. It's one of those things you find out on the way. 90% of anything I have to do here in the house is prep work. Um, but prep work uh, makes the, the dream work, I suppose. But yeah, happy with the progress here. Um, probably towards the end of the week, this wall will be done. And hopefully I'll have a new water line in. And hopefully I will have found enough stone to patch the big hole over there. And we'll be well on the way to having this entire area down here wrapped up, done. You know, we've got power clean the walls it'll be way less dusty down here it's already way less dusty over there at the other side like it's night and day difference it's much brighter down here it's airy down here and then we'll get me some place that is not only functional to work in but some place that is uh, a pleasure to work in which is uh, helpful you know it's always easier to get up and want to come to down here and do something if it looks a little bit better so <laughs> Environment helps a lot with mood and having a good environment, uh, I think will help my mood greatly. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. It's always a pleasure for me to be able to bring you into this little slice of what my life is. And along for this <laughs> long and tedious but super rewarding journey. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care of yourselves until then. Bye-bye.